So you know, you might now go to those sites that Amber showed you. Um, take, not not right now, but I mean, <laughs> during the course of the semester, go to those web websites for inspiration and find a partner. Um, while you're learning material, you know, make a note of it. Maybe you want to use it in your in your site later. So uh, we'll we'll explain about we'll explain that a little bit more when we get uh, closer <laughs> to the end of the semester. But just think about it. Know that it's coming, um, and hopefully, you know, you guys will get excited about it. So. The course website is basically the class hub. So here you're going to be able to read announcements, get lecture slides. Um, you're actually going to take role via the website also. Um, you're going to be able to download and submit assignments and get grading in information via the website also. Um, there's actually a feature on the website which lets you see the distribution of grades for a particular assignment, just so you can see you know, how well you did it, how, how well the rest of the class um, uh, did on the, on the assignment, how well they understand the material. There's also the chat room, which I mentioned, and the instant message. And um, these are pretty, I guess, you know, they're, they're nice features to have if, if you're just wondering how well you're doing in the class. Um, it's missing assignments, missing attendances, and your current grade. The current grade isn't, you know, we're going to tweak that at the end of the semester, but it should give you, you know, just a general idea of, of how well you're doing. So I'll demo the website. So this is our old decal website. It's basically the same thing. We changed the background. Um, that's all. OK. So we're going to actually give you uh, class account forms. It looks like we're not going to get those today. So uh, we will discuss when we get towards uh, the end of the class, when we have our activity, what we're going to do about that. But Eventually, you'll be able to register onto the site, and when you when you do, um, it's pretty easy to navigate. You have your you know the basic sections over there, and under lectures, you can let me scroll. Over here. You can basically grab the lecture slides, and you also see here it says if you are absent or excused for a particular lecture. Before the lecture actually begins, there'll be a text box here, and we'll give you a lecture code, which you can enter in here and then basically take roll. Um, under assignments, under assignments, it's basically the same thing. You can see uh, grade distribution, the description for the assignment, and you can view your submissions and grading. So you can add something, and then you can see what you've submitted, and then you can see your grade. And the grade distribution, well, I'll let you guys explore. It's not really too big of a deal. Um, and then the chat room is here. So one thing that's actually kind of cool, if you guys notice, um, is because we are a web design decal, we actually get quite a few companies talking to us about web designers. So um, when that happens from time to time, we will tell you guys, send out an announcement if you guys are interested. I know you guys are all, you know, Maybe just taking this class because you're beginners, but you know, don't be discouraged. If you're interested, you know, you might learn enough in this class to do that, or um, they might have some plan for you know getting you guys up to speed too. And then you can see your final grade and stuff. Um, and that's about it. Let me go back to the slides. but it looks like we don't have those forms right now. So towards the end of class, I think what we'll do is um, we'll split up and let you guys just, uh, fill out your SID, because we need your SIDs and your name um, on an Excel spreadsheet from each of us, and then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. We'll do it manually from now. So let me just skip one of these slides. Okay. Okay, so before we want to start, uh, we start the lecture, one thing that we wanted to do this um, semester was to encourage a lot of class participation. So like. This is kind of third grade, but we're going to give you guys candy if you ask a question. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. It's a little bit of a cheap tactic, but we're not above cheap tactics to get you guys involved in the class. So. Okay, so I'm sure you... Okay. So we're going to start off basically talking about uh, 
browsers, servers, and the internet generally, and how your browser interacts with web servers to grab uh, content. So I'm sure you guys all recognize these brands here. Firefox, Internet Explorer, and then do you guys know the other two brands? Oh, that's Safari and Chrome, exactly. And it's free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so browsers are basically right, like our main links to websites, and their main focus is to grab remote content off web servers. Uh, yeah, you're the clients. So you can think of it, um, so it's actually like client server is actually a more technical terminology, mm -hmm. but you can you can basically look at it exactly like that, and, and that's actually a great way to understand like client servers. A server, if you think about it, you know, like a waiter or something, basically serves files, um, and you as a client orders a certain, you know, a certain um, file by visiting a URL. So you place an order, and the servers uh, give you that content. So that's a, that's a great way to think. Um, here's some other brands. This is on the other side. Um, these are servers, and these are things that, you know, if you're Eeks, maybe you're familiar with them. Uh, if not, then this might be the first time. But it's Apache and Microsoft IIS. You don't have to know these names or anything. Um, and all servers do is make content accessible via the internet. So it's very simple. And in between the client, which is the browser, and these web servers is the internet, right? And what the internet does um, is it just a link between, you know, your 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 room in you know in your house and uh, Google servers somewhere in Silicon Valley? Right? So it's just a medium for transferring files. Um, so how do they all how how do all three of them interact? So what happens when you actually visit a URL like google.com slash some image? Um, what happens is when you visit that URL, uh, your browser takes that request. And using its own language, basically asks, "Can I have uh, this image from you know Google.com?" And it goes, you know, it asks, sorry, it asks, and it goes to the internet. And if nothing goes wrong, nothing gets corrupted, it comes back out the other side, uh, ungarbled. And the web server sitting at the other end uh, sees that request and basically fulfills it or tries to. So it sends back the file. Right? So it's it's pretty simple. Are there any questions about? Uh, just the way that, that the browser interacts with the server. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Question. So where you said where is Apache located? Like right. So Apache is a web server. It's run on. A, so at either end, um, you have your laptop, and Google has their computers. Right. So on our computer, we have things like Firefox and Internet Explorer installed. That's our web browser. And then on Google's computer, they run something called uh, Apache or whatever web server it is that, that they're using. So it's basically two program, sorry, two programs sitting on remote machines uh, talking together through the internet. Sorry if I get anyone. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's it's sour strips. So there's. Um, right. it's, it's, it's all so John's going to talk a little about uh, URLs, and URLs, like I was saying before, is um, it's a way to basically specify uh, what file is you're trying to get and, and where you're trying to get it. Um, yeah, so you guys have definitely used URLs, but you guys might not have been able to dissect what exactly everything means. So URLs first start um, right here at the protocol. So the protocol is just basically some set standard way of communicating um, certain types of information across the internet. So there are like several protocols. Um, the main one that you always use is HTTP. Sometimes when you go on secure websites like banking websites or um, I don't know, some other secure websites, they'll use something <laughs> called HTTPS. Um, that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. And it makes sure to authenticate the, the web server, to make sure that it's not someone that's trying to pretend to be like Bank of America and hack into your bank account. The other thing, the other protocol that's pretty common is something called FTP, which you will be using uh, to transfer files from like your local computer to the web server that Alex has set up. Um, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Uh, the next thing in the URL is something called the prefix, um, in this case the www part. And um, a lot of the times, you can go to a website without having to enter that prefix, or even sometimes there are websites that have like um, 
different prefixes in front of it. So, for example, our decal website, it's um, decal.awindustries.com. So we have the domain, uh, in this case, berkeley.edu, and in, our ca in the case of our website, we have the domain uh, awindustries.com, and the prefix is decal. Uh, the rest of the URL basically specifies what you want to get from this particular domain. And uh, in this case, we want something from the image folder and sections, and eventually this Berkeley text Any questions? So what the domain does is it basically says like what ser so each server is located. Um, they, they actually have their own special address called an IP address, and a domain name is kind of like a user friend, uh, a human friendly representation of that. So the domain actually specifies whose server you're trying to get, you know, whatever information. So, you know, Google is Google What does www mean? You put decal there by WW means World Wide Web. Right. So, uh, what's... So, you, you could also put decal there as if you're a website, right? In our particular case, yes. In so our website. Yeah. It's, it's more of a subtlety. A lot of time you'll, a lot of the times you'll see URLs with www in front of it. Yeah. Um, they could just as easily serve it without the www. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, just like decal. It's just like another another little thing in front of it, but it doesn't have to necessarily be there. Um, yeah. Just don't don't worry about it. And, I, and looking at your faces, some of you guys are scared about all this technical stuff. You don't have to know too much about it. What you should pay attention to is what John's about to explain. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm basically gonna give you the gist of um, how you guys are gonna be uploading your files into the Alex's web server. Um, so you're just basically going to go to this address, http users.decal.awindustries.com slash cs1d8xx. Um, this xx will be later filled in with um, your account codes. So when we get that set up, um, you'll be able to basically go to this address and look up the files that you transferred to the server. Um, here I've taken some screenshots from um, the FTP program that will be used for the Windows users. Um, so when you first like log on, you basically get this simple directory. You have something called public, and everything that you want to be able to see needs to be put in this public folder. So in this case, I created like some uh, folder called stuff, and it has an HTML document called test.html. And in order for me to access that through my web browser, I'll have to basically do um, this base address slash stuff slash test.html. Questions? Okay, so now we're going to talk about HTML, which is what you guys. Oh, sorry, question. Uh, are these sites going to be online? What? Yeah, uh, they, they will be online. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, some of you are like, what is HTML? I've never heard of it before. Um, HTML actually stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which is kind of a mouthful, but basically it's a computer programming language used to build websites. Um, so it gives structure to ordinary text using tags, and I'll show you what I mean by this later. Um, but we really want to emphasize that HTML files are really just like text files, um, just like code written in a text file with the extension .html that are then rendered by the browser when the browser gets the files back from the server. So what um, I'll just talk about. Okay, so what do I mean by using markup? Um, so imagine that you have two paragraphs just in plain text. So obviously this, this doesn't look too bad, read it because they're only one sentence, but what if you had like a 10 page paper? Everything would just be like jumbled together and it wouldn't be very easily read. Um, what you can do is actually tell the browser what each text thing should be. For example, here we're using these P tags um, to represent paragraphs. So you can enclose um, each paragraph in these P tags and then when the browser sees it, it'll know that they're paragraphs, so it'll render it nicely. much better than 